Earlier, we had a look at how we'd build a PC that can go head to head with the Xbox One X on all fronts. Today we're going to look at how to build a system that would match the PS4 Pro, so let's get started. RAM 4 2GB Kingston HyperX Fury at 2666MHz Price at the time of this feature, $52.99 the One X had a considerably enlarged RAM pool as compared to the Xbox One. While the Pro technically offers developers an extra 512MB of RAM to work with, this still only means that 5.5GB is available for developers to work with. And keep in mind that this is a shared pool. This means that system RAM usage will likely top out at 4GB. Console side memory optimizations, something developers have had to do since the 256MB PS3 days, would mean that the Pro can handle plenty of titles that'd just crash on a PC equipped with 4 gigs of RAM. As such, this pair of 4GB Kingston sticks puts our build on par with the consoles, while 16GB is really a more forward-facing option. There are no games out there today that won't run with 8 gigs of RAM. GPU Sapphire RX 570 4GB Price at the time of writing this feature, $99. The GPU is the PS4 Pro's strong point. We use the term strong point relatively here though. The way the lower mid-range GPU market has been heating up, a lot of options now exist in the $200 to $300 range that'll blow the Pro out of the water, not the least of which is the GTX 1070 besting 1660 Ti, which might actually compare favorably to the PS5. A consequence of the increased competition here is that the older, lower mid-range parts have been going for incredible prices. This Sapphire RX 570, for instance, has been going for the frankly appalling price of $99, a full $70 below its launch price. The RX 570, a Polaris part like the Pro's GPU, comprehensively bests its console sibling on account of substantially higher 1244 MHz clock speed. The 200GE doesn't quite have the throughput to sustain a locked 60fps, so what this means in practice is a rock solid 30fps experience with all the ultra bells and whistles enabled, and the option to run at unlocked frame rates. The 570 can also deliver console quality experiences at 4K in a pinch. CPU Athlon 200GE Price at the time of writing this feature, $55. While a lot of attention's been given recently to the 200GE's overclocking capabilities, it compares favorably enough to the Pro at stock clocks. If we were planning a build with an alternative objective in mind, such as more reliably hitting 1080p 60, we may have considered a slightly higher tier B350 MOBO, which would allow for overclocking. By picking a $55 bargain basement dual core CPU here, we're saying less about the Athlon 200GE's bang for the buck, which is very high, and more about just how awful all the 8th gen consoles are in terms of processing capabilities. We've said a lot here over the years about how ill-suited the console's Jaguar-based CPUs are for gaming workloads, and how GPU compute is often used as a crutch for the processor's inadequacy. On the flip side, this is great if you're building a PC to go head-to-head -head with the PS4 Pro. The 200GE is a dual-core part at 3.2GHz based on the Zen architecture. Zen has a nearly 50% IPC boost as compared to Jaguar, and the 200GE's 3.2GHz clock speed is considerably higher than the PS4 Pro's Jaguar at 2.14. While maximum theoretical throughput may be a bit higher on the Pro's CPU, real gaming workloads heavily favor single-threaded performance, where the 200GE has a nearly 2x advantage. In practice, this means that the 200GE will offer better results than the PS4 Pro when paired with the RX 570. Moreover, because of the flexibility of a PC, 1080p60 is a viable option if you're not just looking for a slight bump in resolution. Storage Western Digital Blue 1TB 7200RPM Hard Drive Price at the time of writing this feature, $48. For standard builds, we'd recommend plugging in a 128GB SSD alongside your hard drive for a zippier overall experience. The PS4 Pro doesn't have an SSD, however, so it would be redundant for our Pro equivalent build to include one. There's nothing exceptional about the Western Digital Blue. 1TB of storage matches the PS4 Pro, and at 7200RPM you get reasonable read-write times. Motherboard Asus Prime A320M-K Price at the time of writing this feature, $59. Higher-end motherboards are a bit overrated, to be honest. The additional tolerances built into them are meant more than anything else to allow for greater degrees of overclocking. In our pro-equivalent build, overclocking is fairly redundant, as even with a mere two cores and four threads, the 200GE readily matches the Pro's meager Jaguar-based processor. A320 parts are entry-level AM4 boards with overclocking locked out. 
In a real life build, we'd opt for a cheap B350 board. They cost more than the A320M here, but would allow you to overclock the 200GE and eke out higher frame rates. As it stands, this ASUS board lets us fill in all the components and boot it up at the lowest possible price point. And with a console equivalent build, that's really what matters. PSU Seasonic S12 II 430 Bronze Price at the time of writing this feature, $49. The 430 watt S12 II is perfect for low profile builds. Thanks to Polaris's remarkable power efficiency, the RX 570 doesn't consume more than 200 watts and needs just a single 8 pin power connector. Likewise, the Athlon 200G has a mere 35 watts TDP. You could opt for an even lower capacity power supply, but the 430 watt S12 II has enough headroom to ensure rock solid stability. Keyboard and mouse, Logitech MK550. Price at the time of writing this feature, $44. With peripherals, we tend to prioritize functionality over form. For feature parity, a pro build would need wireless peripherals, not a decade-old keyboard connected via a janky PS2 to USB adapter. The Logitech MK550 is a great option here as it doesn't require much effort. It's a mouse-keyboard combo with a single wireless dongle for an effortless plug-and-play experience. DualShock 4 Wireless Controller Price at the time of writing this feature, $46. The keyboard-mouse combo is ideal for FPSs, immersive sims, and related genres. However, plenty of console ports benefit immensely from having a controller. Fighting games, for instance, were designed with controllers in mind, and we tried playing Dark Souls with mouse and keyboard for about 5 minutes. It didn't end well. As we're aiming for feature parity with PS4 Pro, we've included a DualShock 4 in this build. Considering how hard it was to get PS3 controllers working on PC, DualShock 4 support in Windows is remarkable. It pairs as readily as any other Bluetooth device. And what's more, after the rather poor reception of the Steam controller, Valve rolled out official support for the DualShock 4 in Steam, allowing for a whole host of additional functionality, like control remapping. As one of the five remaining people still gaming on a Steam controller, it makes me sad to write this, but c'est la vie. Windows 10. Price at the time of writing this feature, $139. And here's the unavoidable extra, the operating system. A Windows 10 Home Edition license will cost you an extra $139. Wi-Fi dongle. Price at the time of writing this feature, $10. You're gonna need an internet connection for this build. A Wi-Fi dongle is essential since the motherboard doesn't feature Wi-Fi connectivity built in. This is a standard no frills dongle, but it's enough to take advantage of 100 megabit per second connectivity. Case. Thermal Take Versa. Price at the time of writing this feature, $39. This is a large functional case with plenty of space for enhanced air circulation. It doesn't have transparent cutouts or RGB lighting, but it does the job, keeping your parts together and allowing for adequate airflow. Final price, $640.99. And that's a wrap. While our final price point here is substantially higher than the cost of a PS4 Pro, our build includes a whole host of stuff, from peripherals to a Windows license. So the PS4 Pro, from a purely technical perspective, is much cheaper than a similarly powered PC. And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily. Also, don't forget to switch on the bell notification icon, that way you don't miss out on any of our videos.